Praise the Lord. Welcome to God is Speaking. Today, I want to talk about the touch. You know, oftentimes we hear people praying and, you know, they're saying, Lord, touch so-and-so, touch so-and-so. And people are like, what in the world? What does that even mean to touch somebody? When we're speaking of the Lord, what does that even mean? And sometimes people pray things because they hear it but they don't really understand it. So I want to look at that today. And first I want to look at actually the word touch and what it means. Um, I'm looking at with the Greek definition, the word touch means to lay hold of, to know, to fasten to. It means to modify or change by touching. It means a touch that influences when it's used in the scripture. So it's not just a touch like, and it means nothing, but it is to modify, to influence. It's in a way that will alter or change somebody. It should be impacting. And so to think about this word and the fact that many of us have been doing the sit-ups with my ebook just to do spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture, which is what the sit-ups acronym is, is that we're impacting. So what does it mean when we're calling on the Lord to touch, to impact, to alter, and to change? So I want to start off by looking in Matthew chapter 8. In Matthew chapter 8, and beginning in the beginning, in verse 1, it says, When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy was gone. So now we see where his touch can cleanse us. That's one of the ways that he encounters us and we encounter him. He cleanses us. Now here we know it was with a skin disease, a leprosy um, that was uh, that this man had. But in us, he cleanses us from the inside out. He cleanses us from sin, from, from filthiness, from ungodliness. And so there's a cleansing touch. While we're still in Matthew, in chapter 8, look down and we'll look in verse um, 14, chapter eight, verse 14 says, when Jesus was come to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever and he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered to them. So in this one, we see that there is a quieting touch. There is a touch that she had a fever. She was sick. She was laid there. And he touched her. And it was like a quieting healing takes over in her. And so there is a touch that alters and changes us when our body is out of whack, when our mind is out of whack, when there's something that is not lined up with God's healing word, that there is a touch, a connection with the Lord, with the word that can quiet our bodies, our minds and heal us and cause us to line up spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally. Look with me in Matthew chapter 9. In Matthew chapter 9, we will look down to, let's go down towards the end here. Um, verse 28, it says, And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, believe ye that I'm able to do this? They said unto him, yea, Lord. So now these were the blind men that were crying out to him, saying, thou son of David, have mercy on us. So when he went to the house, they came with him and he's asking them, do you believe I can do it? And they said, yes, Lord. So verse 29 says, then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. This touch. Now, we know in the natural, he caused them to be able to see when they were blind. 
But we know there's an illuminating touch when we connect with the Lord Jesus Christ that before we are saved, we're blind. But when we come in connection with him, in relationship with him, he allows us to see in the spiritual. We're able to see the truth. We're able to see who he is. We're able to see God clear. We're able to see who we're supposed to be, how we have been in darkness and in bondage and been blind, just as... Uh, Saul, before he became Paul, how he was walking around, you know, threatening the church, persecuting believers, how he then had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, a conversion experience. And when he did, and he was prayed for, the Bible says it was like scales that fell from his eyes. He saw everything differently. He saw the truth as opposed to a lie. He saw who Jesus really was. And so there is a connection, an altering, changing encounter and touch that changes our lives when we encounter the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Mark, when we look in the book of Mark chapter 7, we'll look at another way that there is a touch in Mark chapter 7. Amen. And remember now, we're saying that this is a touching that influences, it impacts, it changes, it alters a person, their life, their mind, their heart, their body, their situation, their circumstance. That's what the word of God does for us. And Jesus is the living word of God. So now we look in Mark chapter 7. And we're going to go down to... Verse, let's go down near 30 here. Let me see. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 26. Well, verse 25. Mark 7 and 25. And it reads, For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek. A Syrophoenician by nation, by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of your daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid up on the bed. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came out of the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of the Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. Now, before he touches them, I want to say why I went back to the woman who went to Jesus because her daughter had a demonic spirit and she went to him. But I wanted us to see something before we talk about how he touched this person who was deaf and who had an impediment in his speech that Jesus is able to touch somebody who is not in his presence. Somebody who wasn't there, he was able from a distance through faith to have an impact and an influence and change a situation. This woman that went to him in faith, he was able to deliver and restore her daughter by impacting with the faith that this mother had for her child. So don't think that you have to be in a church building, that it has to be the pastor that's doing it. It's your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, a connection with him. That as you come into his presence, as you come in faith, you can be interceding for a family member, a loved one, or praying for yourself. That he's able to touch, he's able to impact, to influence, and to change, and to alter the person, the situation, the circumstance, the heart, the mind. And so I wanted us to, um, to recognize that as well when we're seeking that touch and that encounter. But here we have one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And it says they beseeched him or begged him to put his hand on him. And verse 33 said he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears. And he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Ephatha, that is, be open. And so straightway it says his ears were open and the string of his tongue was loose and he spake plain. So again, this was a touch. 
And so when we look at this one, this is liberating and freeing. His, it was like his ears were plugged up and his tongue was tied up. And, and so he had an impediment in his speech and he couldn't speak right. He, he couldn't hear. But when Jesus had a contact with him, he was loose. His tongue was loosed. His ears were open. He was able to do what he had never been able to do before. God is able to loose us where we've been bound. He's able to free us and liberate it. Look, the Bible says he who the son sets free is free indeed. And so he came to set captives free. So again, spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, he is able to liberate and to free us. And so over and over, we can see in the scriptures where there was a touch and encounter that altered, that freed up, that changed situations. And I could go into more, but I think that we get the feel of it. There's a reassuring touch where he has touched and told someone to arise and not be afraid where he touched. Um, and he was able to, you know, uh, to change those that were, that had come to him that were, you know, that were, um, that were bound, that were hurting, that were sick. And the Bible tells us, you know, that he healed the sick, that he delivered those that were bound, that he, you know, cast demons out. But this is all with an encounter with the Lord, whether it's a physical touch or whether it's an encounter and there is a touch because we came in contact with, um, with him by our faith. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. She touched him of his garment. She didn't touch Jesus. He didn't physically touch her. She touched him of his garment. But the issue of blood was stopped at that point because he says your faith has made you whole. So the point is this, is that our faith causes a connection with the Lord that can be life-changing, life-altering, that can make us free and healed and whole and delivered. It can make our family whole, healed, and delivered as we intercede and stand in the gap. So continue in faith, continue in prayer, press into the Lord, stay in his presence, abide in Christ. Let the word of God abide in you. That is the touch. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us, Lord God, to stay connected, to abide in Christ and your word take over in us, that we are under the influence of the Holy Spirit, that we are impacted and we're impacting others. So Father, in the name of Jesus, let your word Take over, Lord God, that we are growing, that we're changing, and we're progressing, that we're bearing fruit and being used for your glory. I pray for those that heard this message, Lord God, for a change in their life and their family. I pray for healing and deliverance and restoration. I pray for provision, open eyes, open ears. I pray, Lord God, that they're boldly proclaiming the good news of the gospel, that their bodies and their minds are healed, that their minds are stayed on you and they have peace. Lord God, I thank you that you're doing a work in them and their loved ones, their household, and everything that pertains to them. I pray that you perfect it. We give you all praise, glory, and honor. And it is in the mighty, matchless, powerful name of Jesus that we pray and say hallelujah and amen. God bless you. Love you to life. Get a touch. Press in. Connect. Have an encounter. Be altered. Be changed. Intercede for others so they too can be changed, can be healed, and be delivered. Don't forget to preach the gospel to somebody who's unsaved. Join us Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for prayer and for um, us to come together in faith, interceding for our nation, for the leaders, for, for our families, for loved ones unsaved, for the church, for the broken. We intercede and believe God for everything and everything because he is God alone. So God bless you. Be blessed. And I'll see you next time.